there have been a number of films using some of the most influential actors in the world with the latest CGI technology attempting to show that man and apes are one and the same primate family. It is a clever way of programming people's minds with stunning imagery to make them believe that they are no different to apes. The western educational system is doing the same thing as well and young minds are not allowed to question or challenge what is presented to them. But where did this idea come from? Peter Camper was an 18th century Dutch physician, anatomist, surgeon, physiologist, zoologist, anthropologist, paleontologist and a naturalist who was a member of London's Royal Society. He introduced the facial angle, the forerunner to modern craniology and the now defunct pseudoscience phrenology where he taught that there was a strong resemblance between monkeys and blacks. Even though his claims are not based upon any facts of human biology, when you are the leading authority on medical jurisprudence, artists and sculpture in Europe, you will go unchallenged. But another man took up the mantle by tweaking it a little and he attempted to prove that all humans are descended from apes and his name was Charles Darwin, a 19th century English naturalist, also a member of the Royal Society. And in the following century in 1871, he published a book titled The Descent of Man that has influenced how the entire modern secular science community thinks, where he speculated that, with respect to the absence of fossil remains serving to connect man with his ape-like progenitors, those regions which are the most likely to afford remains connecting man with some extinct ape-like creature have not as yet been searched by geologists. Charles Darwin believed that modern man was a descendant of an ape-like creature and like Peter Camper he had no evidence to defend his claims. But Hollywood, despite no evidence, is trying to reinforce his ideas in films like Rampage. And when a gorilla is taught to speak sign language, it drives the message home even stronger. Science departments, museums, education systems teach what Darwin says like it is a deep-rooted scientific fact. But every now and then, they have to admit that they still have not found the missing link between man and apes, 146 years after Darwin's Descent of Man was published. Scientists are confused whether humans came from the trees or from the seas. Others believe that man is descended from one ugly looking sea creature. Some have recently connected man to a rodent found in Dorset in England. Some claim that the birth of mankind is in Europe. Others claim the oldest is in Morocco in Africa. And the most respected science journal Nature says that the evolutionary theory definitely needs a rethink. Why are people so confused? In Darwin's earlier work in 1859, titled The Origin of Species, you can get a little background to the modern confusion. For when he was challenged by the public on his new ideas, this was his response. On the origin and transitions of organic beings with peculiar habits and structure. It has been asked by the opponents of such views as I hold, how, for instance, could a land carnivorous animal be converted into one with aquatic habits? For how could the animal in its transitional state subsisted? And this was his response. Although no graduated links of structure fitted for gliding through the air now connect the Galeopithecus with the other insectivora, yet there is no difficulty in supposing that such links formerly existed and that each was developed in the same manner with the less perfectly gliding squirrel each grade of structure have been useful to its possessor. This was his argument. Now let's put it to the test. A Galeopithecus is a name for the Caligus, known as a flying lemur. It is a gliding mammal that are found in Southeast Asia. A bumblebee is an insect that pollinates plants and that mankind is dependent upon for the majority of things he puts into his mouth. They are beautiful looking creatures to look at but they are not related to mammals, as Darwin suggested. Sadly, they are dying out in record numbers, bordering on extinction, which does not look very good for man's existence. 
But as fossilized bees have been discovered, they have realized that there is no evolutionary process that took place. The earliest bees look like the bees of today, and scientists are becoming more and more aware that the fossils of bees and the fossils of flying lemurs shows that they are two separate and distinct creatures. But even though the evidence is clear that Darwin was wrong, the scientific community still clings to his ideas with the belief that they are embracing scientific truths. Darwin, in his Ascent of Man, said, At the period and place, whenever and wherever it may have been, when man first lost his hairy covering, he probably inhabited a hot country. Though the fossil record doesn't support these claims, people believe these claims by Darwin. Is that science or is that faith? And they actually believe that man lost his body hair in some transitional change. But deep investigation by the International Journal for Parasitology in 1999 admits that most fail to account for the distinctiveness of man's hairlessness among mammals of the same size. Unfortunately, fossils cannot help us to explain how denudation occurred and how it helped hominids to survive. The New York Times in 2003 said, one of the most distinctive evolutionary changes as humans parted company from their fellow apes was their loss of body hair. But why and when human body hair disappeared, together with the matter of when people first started to wear clothes, are questions that have a long lane beyond the reach of archaeology and paleontology. Something doesn't quite add up. If there is absolutely no evidence to verify what you believe in, why are you still teaching something that is not based upon any scientific facts at all? We shall find out more and the reason why in an up-and-coming study called DNA. <laughs>